It is Lancia's chance to show its force, headed by Andrew's tarmac racing car. Renault won last year with Jean Ragnotti, but this year he drives the only official Factory 5 turbo. Bernard Begin has the task of keeping 430 horsepower of BMW in check over Corsica's demanding mountain roads. Hanno Mikola debuts the new modified Quattro 360 BHP and much lighter than the old car. But Corsica is not a lucky place for the championship leader. Walter Röhrl has a chance to back up his earlier Monte Carlo victory in the second Lanciel rally, whilst Guy Freckler gives the Manta 400 its world championship debut. Jean-Luc Terrier is one of rallying's characters and drives his Renault in a similar style, hoping to bolster the team's chances of a repeat win. Marco Alain was drafted into the Lancia team at the last minute for Corsica. He's really a gravel driver, but he's hungry for a win. Michel Mouton's Quattro spits flames from the exhaust, and even on this first stage, she has engine trouble. Lancia number no. 4 is a jolly club car for Buda Fieri, followed by a flamboyant Tony Pond and his Nissan 240RS. Batiga crashed badly on Corsica last year and has been out of action ever since. The crowds give his return to competition plenty of moral support, while Chatrio adds more weight to the Renault team. Jean Colomier moves straight into a class lead in his Group A Ascona. Marco Alain is astonishing everyone. He leads the rally. But Walter Rurl is not giving in to him as the Lancia convoy forged ahead. André held third, followed by Vudafieri. Begin is destined to end his run when the BMW blows its head gasket. But Mikola is mixing it with the Lancia giving Audi fresh hope for tarmac rallies. Batiga drops behind Mikola, but stays ahead of Mouton's Quattro, which still has engine trouble. Terrier leads the Renault Challenge now that tyre troubles plague the team. Whilst Frecla is soon to share the BMW's fate with a blown head gasket. Poor tyres are slowing Ragnotti, whilst Pond takes command of his unsuitable Nissan. The Renaults don't seem much quicker than Kalumi's Ascona, and Copier's Citroen Visa is matching their pace. Bruno Sabi is to uphold Renault's hopes, but not before he has an excursion during a road section. Stage 8, and having completed a southeasterly loop round Porto Vecchio, the cars head north towards Bastia. A 51-kilometre section with no straight longer than 300 metres sees four Lanciers in the top four places, and Corsican specialist Andrue beating his teammates by 30 seconds to go into the lead. Roll has two punctures and drops three minutes. Mikola's challenge is fading, and he will not hold off the Tiger for much longer.
Terrier's the quickest Renault, and he beats the Quattro's. Pond is three and a half minutes off the pace. Franceschi, starting from 45, has his Renault 5 Turbo up in the top 15. Stage 10, and with three tests to go before a halt in Bastia, Terrier crashes, and his Renault is destroyed by fire. The delay means that darkness has fallen by the time the competitors arrive. Marco Alain is now taking time off leader Andre. Luda Fieri is third, Rolf fourth, and Batiga has got past Mikola to put Lancia in the top five places. Ragnotti leads the Renaults and is seventh. Mouton is to stop three times on the next stage with fuel injection trouble and power steering failure and lies ninth at the Bastia halt. Pond is 11th, over half an hour behind Andre. Next morning in the little village of Varchetta, Andre is beaten by Roel by nine seconds, both well clear of a lane. Buda Fieri takes the same time as the Finn. The Tiger has spent a sleepless night because it was here that he crashed last year. His time reflects his concern. Two and a half minutes slow over 60 kilometers. Mikola. Stunt driver Ragnotti. Philippe Turin with a humble seed is eighth ahead of Mouton, who is exhausted after last night's problems. Local hero Manzigal is up to 10th. Pond's style continues to provide the best entertainment. After a night halt back at Ayakio, Saturday sees the circus at Caglio. Andre has gone out with a failed water injection system and Elaine holds over a minute advantage over Rao. Vudafieri is third in the Jolly Club car. Mikola fourth, but on the next stage he loses a wheel. A strut is damaged and he's out. Batiga is through his psychological barrier and puts up quickest time here and on the next moving to fourth when Mikola goes. Michelle is sixth but her motor is on its last legs. At seven comes Sabi, 11 and a half minutes ahead of Tony Pond. Then Franceschi and Manzigal. Coulomier still leads Group A and is 17th overall. Copy A12. Stage 25 is cancelled because of an accident on the same road earlier in the event which caused injury to some spectators. So Walter tours through to give the crowd at least something to watch. At the next service, Lancia boss Cesare Fiori decides his point has been proved and instructs his drivers to hold station, reduce speed and save their cars. Will they obey?
The Tiger is a comfortable fourth place man behind Elaine, Roel and Vudafieri. All that flame under Michelle's motor means the exhaust is breaking up and she finally has to retire after so much hard work for nothing. Savvy will finish best non-Lancia in fifth place. Ragnotti was lost after colliding with a cow. A super sixth place for Pond in a very unsuitable car. Franceschi ends up seventh. Kalumi, eighth. Rurl is under orders to stay second, and Marku feels he's having to go unnecessarily fast to stay ahead of him. Is the team manager about to have a strike on his hands? Unlike in East Africa, the Nissan is proving reliable in Pond's hands, and only a routine checkover is needed to see the car to the finish. Over the last stages, all fire has gone from the Lancia force. The finish is in sight. A Yakia welcomes the survivors of this tortuous event as Mark. Elaine, a gravel expert, confounds the form book by taking his first championship win for two years on a tarmac specialist's event. Mikola retains his championship lead, but Lancia takes over the makes championship by one point from Opel, who are, in turn, one point ahead of Audi.